Delar, I'm from Asia, and uh, today I'll be presenting to you guys uh, this topic called Feminism in the Comic Book Industry. Uh, but before we begin, let me just uh, give you guys a disclaimer. This is not about manga, uh, this is not about the, uh, the non-superhero comic book thing, because uh, I'm not very good at that. Uh, but uh, basically, today we're going to cover what feminism actually means to these comic books because uh, feminism actually started, uh, became more popular in the 60s but it is only recently that we see more and more changes to the comic book industry and this means a lot to us because uh, it, it's this really slow uh, but uh, effective change. So uh, we see women in the past uh, having their lives revolving around men as we can see here in uh, Lois Lane, uh, Kathy Kaye, Batwoman and uh, Wonder Woman. So um, these women, they are always, their lives are always fixated around uh, this whole idea of getting married, uh, getting a boyfriend, and uh, yeah, and it's really strange because people uh, see women as being disempowered uh, when we have uh, the men holding more power uh, in terms of like information. Uh, like for example, uh, Batwoman doesn't know who Batman really is, but Batman has the knowledge of who Batwoman really is. So. That's really strange. And we have this idea of like uh, misrepresentation of rape, uh, where in issue 200 of the Avengers, uh, Miss, Miss Marvel was actually raped, but uh, they didn't really touch on it, and they kind of showed her to be like a willing party in some sense, even though her memory of this whole sexual intercourse was wiped out. And uh, women, powerful women are often portrayed as being unattractive, which is very, um, problematic because it, uh, we have like the most feminist icon Wonder Woman here who feels that uh, being powerful makes her inhuman and she actually wants to change that and to, to become less powerful uh, and over the years even though we have more and more women in comic books the comics are really gaining many female characters and you can see that in proportion uh, in comparison to the men uh, female characters are increasing uh, not, not really increasing actually, and the numbers are actually pretty much stagnating all throughout the years. Uh, nevertheless, we do have more women in the comic book industry, uh, uh, in terms of like artists and writers, and all of these women are heading uh, their own titles instead of drawing or writing for men. And that's uh, really significant right now, but nevertheless, they still form a small minority of the whole population of uh, people in the comic book industry. And uh, we also see inappropriate costumes, uh, like here we have Starfire. And uh, although it's arguable that uh, she's an alien, that's why she has to dress in a very different way. But uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very strange because dressing differently does not mean you have to dress sexily, right? But nevertheless, uh, in more recent comics, we have uh, more changes to their costumes and uh, women are now dressing more appropriately and uh, also we have more like practical costumes in comparison to the past, as you can see it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that wasn't very helpful for a crime fighting career, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, even in the 70s, we do see women moving towards uh, liberation, uh, like Lois Lane here who no longer cares about what Superman thinks about her. And this is this is an issue in the 70s, uh, yeah, but uh, that's when the feminist movement actually became more popular and uh, more widespread across America. Uh, we also see an example in uh, um, Mrs. Fantastic. Alright, so um, here uh, we have the DC Bombshells, which is a newly released series, and uh, they are actually repackaging this whole idea of uh, female superheroes as being uh, like powerful and attractive at the same time. So uh, there's no longer this uh, disparity between being attractive and being powerful. And uh, one good role model of the feminist movement is uh, uh, Barbara Gordon, uh, Bad Girl. And uh, she has actually uh, put together all the uh, parts of her costume by herself instead of having uh, them being supplied by Batman as uh, it, it used to be. So now she's no longer this sidekick to Batman. And uh, actually, uh, in the past, during the events of The Killing Joke, she was shot and paralyzed uh, by uh, the Joker. But nevertheless, she still managed to go on with her crime-fighting career as Oracle, even though she's in a wheelchair. Uh, and uh, actually, she is this really smart and really strong uh, female character who actually went on to go and uh, start this whole all-female superhero team. Uh, actually, it's the first all-female superhero team from DC. And uh, we actually also see this in uh, Marvel Comics, which is 
like the A force. It's quite new, and I'm not very familiar with it. But yeah, as you can see, we have uh, more focus on female superheroes. And uh, another good example we have is Black Canary, and she's possibly the most consistent uh, female superhero. Uh, who's really strong and really independent, and she doesn't allow men to like get a hold over her. Uh, and uh, as you can see later, she actually is able to overpower two men at the same time, which is very significant, considering that uh, there was this whole idea of uh, women being physically weak in comparison to men. So the fact that she was able to overpower them and not allow them to um, get a hold of her makes her one of the most feminist. Uh, superheroes in the comic book industry. And uh, nowadays, moving forward, we see more and more titles focusing on uh, the female audience as well as empowering women through uh, more feminist themes. And uh, it's not just, feminism is not just a minority kind of issue now, it's also in mainstream comics which makes it uh, more widespread and uh, we can see it emerging as well. And uh, we also have this new concept called the DC Superhero Girls. It's really, really new, like episode 3 just was released last week. And uh, it's actually aimed at uh, empowering children, young girls, uh, from a really, really young age. But nevertheless, I, I'm a bit skeptical about it because it, it, it's also like this marketing uh, stint kind of thing. But um, whatever the effects of it, uh, only time will tell. And, but nevertheless, we do see more uh, women in the comic book industry. We do see more uh, like a shift towards uh, more feminist themes. And uh, like even though that aren't uh, even though they aren't like that much uh, as of now, but uh, we can be confident and optimistic that it will go towards that direction uh, in the future. And from now on, even women can be superheroes too. Wow.